Hallelujah. 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 I can only imagine. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only imagine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Father God, as we come before you right now, Lord, if I only can imagine what you have done, Lord, and what I can do through you, Father, as I decrease and you increase in me, Father. Use me the way you desire, Lord. Not my will, but thine will be done on earth as it's in heaven. God, I thank you for being able to have my pastor have another birthday. Thank you for First Lady. Thank you for this church and the church people, Lord. Father God, I just want to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. I mean, uh, I always was a somebody can preach and make me want to preach. But now I got somebody singing and make me want to preach. I probably wanted to sing, but I know I can't sing. I can hold a little note, but I know I can't do what he do. So God give us all different areas. And I thought about it. I said, God, if I could just sing like that, what a ministry I have. But God gave me what he gave me. And what he gave me was to preach the word. And I was thinking as I was, when I know it was my time to come, y'all know me, y'all know I just go look and see whatever the Holy Ghost tell me to do. And I try to fight it sometimes because sometimes I say, I don't even know how you going to. I know how he going to do it, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I let him have it, then he do it anyway. Amen? And uh, before I give you my theme, I'm going to read four verses, then we're going to go somewhere else. Amen? Beloved, ble I'm, I'm sorry, First John 4, 4 to 4. It said, Beloved, bleed not every spirit, but it tried the spirit, whether they of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the Antichrist. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof ye have <coughs> heard that it should be come, that he should come, even now already is he in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I got my theme from that last verse. Greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. Theme will be. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. Nobody. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you, your bills ain't paid, your house is messed up, your family not doing right. There's nobody greater than Jesus. Nobody. That's the person that we desire to be like. And then when I read that, it said that you, you're greater. And it say that you little children have overcome them because greater than he is in you, than he is in the world. Last week you realized you learned that you'll be a new creature if you believe in God. Yes. Now you realize that now there's nobody greater than you. And when I read that, I said, God, you tell me ain't nobody greater than me. Nobody. I might not have the education. I might be a tad bit 
Well, I ain't gonna, I'm on the pulpit. I might be overweight. <laughs> All right, so what? You know what I'm saying? But there's nobody greater. You understand what I'm saying? I don't care. My car might be acting up. My children might not be right. But there's nobody greater. And I can tell you that. Because I know what God has done for me. Can't nobody tell me, because I can tell you what he did for me. But what he did for me, there's nobody greater. You take a little country boy from Alabama and bring him up north. Then you get him out there in the world with no man but a mother. So I'm tired of these kids talking about, I ain't had no daddy. There's nobody greater. You got a father. I have a father in heaven. Nobody greater. All right, I don't want to hear that because I didn't have no father. I had a father, but he was in Alabama. I was here when I was 11, 12, with my mother and my two sisters and another brother. We left one brother back south. That's Charles, the oldest one. But he could do it on his own. He was old enough. I wanted to stay back too. But I was young, too young. So she brought me here, but I thank God. Because even with that all, the going, going and going and doing and not doing and seeing other people have and other, I'm not having it. I can't get, they can get and don't want to get. I mean, I had people who had, all they had to do just go to school. They can get anything they wanted. I can go to school, get an A, I still can't get nothing. But that's okay. Because what it did, it made me want to work. There's nobody greater. Nobody. Because guess what? I got a house, I got a car, I got money, and I got some money in the bank. Not a lot of nothing. I don't try to come ask for nothing. But God is good. Nobody greater. Nobody. As we go forth today, as we study his word, we realize that we had a Holy Spirit in us. And by having a Holy Spirit in you, then you realize what you have to do. And in our Sunday school today, we told us about a woman help, helpmate. I'm not going to go for it because they didn't let me teach it. So I'm going, Mother, tell me, uh-uh. But, Mother, we're going to go where the Holy Ghost tell me to go. And I'm coming. And I'm going to say this here. I say the helpmate. I'm talking to the man. We got to help me. See, you thought I'd go another way, Mom, but I ain't going that way. We got to help me. And by having a helpmate, that means God gave us somebody to walk alongside us. Not behind, not in front, but on the side. And as we walk the side by side, my, son, my daughter's son is saying, I, when you said, it, wouldn't it be great to walk side by side with Jesus? Just imagine, when you're walking, you're walking with Jesus. Because he's in you. And whatever's in you got to come out of you. But I tell you this here, when he made a woman, he didn't make a woman out of the, he made her out of the dust, but he made her out of Adam bone. And when he made her out of, made her out of his side. Hmm, hmm, hmm. First of all, he didn't make her out of his head so she could be head over him. Secondly, he didn't make her under his feet so he could trot over her and tell her what she going to do. And when she going to do it, where she going to do it, how she going to do it. He didn't do that. But he made her out of our side. And because he made her out of my side, he made her, just understand, out of the side. I got my armpit. They clean. But I got the armpit. So that means the woman is under my arm. So I protect her. I keep her protected. I make sure that she don't be like at ease. I make sure I walk around. If I see her talking to somebody I don't think she should be talking to, I got to sneak in a little bit. I might not see nothing, but I'm going to look. I'm going to look, I'm going to look, I'm going to look, and if I don't think it's right, I'm going to tell her. I'm going to let her know 
Baby, I don't. That's a little shaky there. You don't shake your ground. You got to turn it around now because we had that. I was listening to Brother Tony the other night talking about his love. If you're reading the word of God and following it, we all got love like that. Let me tell you, because I know God, ain't, God gave me the right person. For who I am and what I am, he gave me the right person that I need. And when he gave us, that's why he said out of the side. So we as men, we know how to love our wife. We didn't know at first. We didn't have a book. We didn't read the book. We didn't read the book. We went well, we went what daddy did. If daddy did this, then that was right. My wife used to call me when I first, you know, she used to tell me, oh, man, you're a chauvinist. I said, baby, I ain't a chauvinist. I'm what my daddy did. <laughs> I'm from my daddy. I'm his seed. I'm giving you what he get, what I know. But as I learned the word, as I study the word of God, I realized if I love me, I got to love her. And if she loved me, she got to love me. At the same time, we both got to love Christ. And if we love Christ, who Christ is the head over man, and man is the head over woman. But ain't nobody in charge but Christ. See, we get it messed up. And I know what I'm talking about because I was one of them messed up brothers. Because I did really thought that, hey, you got my name? That means you belong to me. Wow. If you say your name is, <laughs> is you Alexander, uh -huh. then you got to be do what Alexander tell you to do. <laughs> See, I wasn't God. I wasn't like God. I wasn't like a, he had compassion and he had a, he had a, he just loved his people. And I loved him. But I did. I thought, but at one time I did think that way. But I realized that's not the, that's not God way. So we got to do, we got to train up a child the way that he should go. <laughs> And then he will not depart. We got to let men know and the young brothers know this is how you got to do. You got to respect your wife. You got to love your wife. You got to realize, hey, is she working? You working? Get in that house and clean. Learn how to wash dishes. Learn how to wash clothes. Learn how to fix your bed. Learn how to cook. If you want to, you can learn how to sew an iron. Hey, my mom said, I'm going to teach y'all all that. Yes, You're going to learn how to do these things. So you won't. I even told my mom, I said, Mom, I love me some German chocolate cake. On, I said, now you're going to have to teach me on, to make this German chocolate cake, Mom. I said, because if you don't teach me to make this German chocolate Come cake, on, and I marry a woman and she can't make it, we're in trouble. We're in trouble already. Mom said, get here, boy. And she showed me. And I ain't talking about no better cracker. I'm talking scratch off the, by, out the by, pot. Out of, get my own flour. Get my own eggs and sugar. Mix it together. No better cracker. It's Freddy cracker. That's the kind of cake I make. And when it was done and it was good. And it's good. And that's the same thing that we do. With our wife. We're supposed to love them as much as you love yourself. We got to learn to respect them. We got to have the young man to start pulling up their pants. Quit wearing them down below your, your butt. I don't want to see it. She still want to see it. Some things I blame the woman, though. Because if a woman wouldn't talk to you, grandson, you pull them pants. Now, he got his up. Because Cause you know he's a soldier in the army, but if he was just hanging out, they'd be down. Then if a woman don't talk to you, you will pull them up. Cause we know don't talk about Pastor. Remember when we were going when we used to go see the women. We had to be clean. You did not go over there with spots all over your shirt. You probably walked with your head back, your hat back until you got to the house. But when you got to the house. Hat came around. 
you didn't come in smelling like you got reefer. Or you drunk or got liquor under your breath. Because the mama and the daddy didn't have it. You might have did it afterward, but you didn't do it then. We had respect then. It seems how now the people want to, they water down things so much so they don't want to do what God tells us to do. They, they want to do what, what the world say do. But the word of God said, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do I renew my mind? By reading the word of God, by studying, by fasting, by praying, by talking to people. Letting them know that it ain't me, but it's God in me. We got to, we got to learn the word of God say, uh, edify one another. Yes. Iron sharp and iron. Yes. We got to, when we talk, we can talk about football. Eagles going to win. And we can talk about other stuff, but we got to put the word of God in there. God got to be in it so that he can get all the credit. It's not really not about us getting any. If I told y'all I was doing, what y'all say? No. Here we go, Lord. Now I want you to turn in and get your attention to John 14 chapter. Remember, nobody greater. I'm going to pick up at the 15th verse. When I was studying, I'm going to say, I said, God, you going to take, you got to take this because I can't do it. Well, believe it or not, I never want to do no preaching. I want God to do all the preaching. When I'm done, when I'm done, let me sit down, Holy Ghost. I don't want to sit here no more. It's not about me. It's about God having his way. Amen? Amen. And, and John 14, 15, verse. Remember the title, Nobody Greater. Because yes, I want you to see something and feel it too. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's important by itself. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if we love God, we'll do the godly thing. We'll learn how to bless those that curse us. We'll learn how to pray for those that spiteful use us and, and use us and stuff. We can do that. We can learn that if somebody step on your feet, you'll be able to kind of look. You'll hold it in. You might want to say something, but you'll learn how to hold it in. You'll learn how to change a little bit when time comes. You'll be able to show your love to people. If they need a ride, you'll be able to give them one. It's really not about you, but it's about them what they need. Because I look at it like this, D. I say, God, thank you that I have a car. I can go to and fro wherever I desire to go. So when I see somebody who can't, God, let me know that you're there to help. That's your job, to help them. I ain't saying be crazy. I know nowadays times is terrible. It ain't like it used to be. You can't just pick up anybody. You can't pick up anybody and you can't take anybody anywhere. Because as you call yourself being nice to them, they think you know you're in trouble. You got to be just, you got to have discernment. You have to ask God. And it said, and I will pay, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you a comfort, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He'll give us a comforter. So I don't want to hear no more Christians talking about I ain't got Jesus. Uh, like you said earlier today, Mr. Swanson, I, I'm going to do what I want to do. No, you can't do what you want to do. I don't care how bad you think you is. You can't do what you want to do. Like Paul said, the good that I want to do, that I don't do. But the bad that I don't want to do, that I do. Because of this flesh. But if you give in to the flesh, you'll have damnation. But you give in to the, I mean, to the spirit, you have life everlasting. And that is our job, to give in to the spirit. Because we got Jesus indwelling in us. Because he is the comforter. And he's told us that he's going to go up and he's going to send back the comforter. And once he's sending back, the comforter is going to tell us all truth. 
So we got to trust him. And I will, and even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not and know him. Neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So I got Jesus. I ain't got no business making no excuses. I ain't got no business hating people. I have no, as, as much, and don't take, as much as I thought I disliked Trump, I got to love him even more. I got to love him even more, even though I don't like his ways. But as a man with the spirit, I got to love him. I got to pray for him because the word say so. And if, and if Jesus is dwelling in me, as the word say, then that's what I have to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not. Neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. You don't live because you want to live. You live because we have the Holy Spirit in us. And because he live, we live. Now, I'm going to say this here. When I die, I want to go to hell. I almost said the other way. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to see hell. I almost would take hell out of my vocabulary. But it's just dead. It's burnt down. But I tell you what, that's where I want to go. But the people, with everybody that is alive, whether you believe or not, you is eternal being. So no matter what happens, you will live. But it's your choice where you want to live at. You can live where you can walk in the cool of the day. You can live where there's 12 trees with fruit on it each month. You can live where the ground is pure gold and clear as a whistle so ain't nothing can get you. Everything is pure. You can live where there don't need no sunlight because Jesus is there. You can live where the stars not to be in the sky no more because you're a star. <laughs> you don't need a star because you'll be the star. You can live. I don't want to live where there's national tears. I don't want to live where I'm in pain every day. I don't want to live where I can look up and see y'all having a party. And I'm down feeling, I'm feeling bad. Like the rich man. When God told him he had a ball, he was partying all day, eating what he wants. All kinds of snakes, steaks, and lobsters, and shrimps, and everything. Collard greens, huh? Girl, you know I'm hungry. Don't be touching collard greens. And, but anyhow, now, but when he ate what he ate, when he was here, he didn't go out to glory. If he had gave God the glory, he would have been heaven. But he didn't give God the glory. He thought he did what he did because of him. He was selfless. But what happened, as he looked around, and he looked up in heaven, the word said he looked through the gospels. And when he looked up there, he seen the poor man, the beggar, Lazarus. Seen him just laying up there. Land in Abraham bosom. Abraham fanning him. Yeah, look out, man. Angels feeding him. Music is playing. They just having a ball. And he look up and say, tell him just dip his finger in the water and touch my lips. <laughs> you want your lips touched, you better do it now. Because if you don't do it now, you're going to mess up. You won't get it up there. Because we ain't got time. When we up there, we ain't got time to come down, and tell me to come down here and touch your lips. Because I'm looking at you. I'm looking at Jesus. And when I get up there, I'm looking at Jesus. I don't care. So ain't nothing you can give me now. 
You can do it now. We can talk about the word. We can help one another. We can, we can pull you in. This is the time to pull you in or pull each other in. Our job is to go out and bring them in. But guess what? If you don't do it now, when we're up there, you're in trouble. Because all we're going to keep our eyes in mind, the word of God said in Hebrew, say, I mean, the psalm say, keep you in perfect peace and keep your mind stayed on him. Up there, my mind going to be on nobody but Jesus. I see my mother. I love my mother. My father, my sisters, all y'all. I love you. But I'm going to be thinking about Jesus. Because he is the one, the truth in the life. No man can come through, brother, say I come through him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Ah, yeah. Uh-oh, y'all. I'm feeling something here. I'm feeling my help. My help coming from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, yeah. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me because I live, and ye should live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye are in me, and I'm in you. That's a powerful message right there. He is in the Father, and the Father is in him, and he is in us. He give us the same blessing that he get. That's why when he said, he said, in an image he made man, in the image made he them. And I love the last part in the second chapter of Genesis. When he made him, he looked at man, he said, I'm going to give him a special blessing. I think Jesus said, he knew. What you going to do, God? I'm going to breathe in him. I'm going to breathe in him and give him our breath, give him our spirit. So when he breathed in us, we became a living soul. So now we can do some of the things that Jesus do. We can't do everything because I can't die and redeem you, but I can help point you the way. I can point you the way. And that's what he had us here to do. He wanted to be that partner. This is what you got to do. And it said, he that, he that has my commandment. Hmm. Wait a minute, y'all. I, I don't know I'm right. My glasses. My peoples. He that has my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that love me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and we will manifest myself to him. In other words, manifest means he's going to show. He's going to show himself to us. We know John said that we ain't be like him, but we will be like him when we see him face to face. And as we go forth here, he's going to he show himself. And Jesus said unto him, not as scared, as scared. Lord, how is it that thou wilt show, will magnify thyself unto us, and not unto the world. And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word. My father will love him, and we will come unto him, and we make our abode with him. In other words, he's going to make his home in us. So if, do you love Jesus? Yes. Let me hear you say, do you love Jesus? Yes. Well, if you love him, you got him in you. So if you love him, you got to walk like him. If you love him, you got to talk like him. If you love him, you got to act like him. So if we love him, we got to be like Jesus. We got to do like Jesus. I ain't saying that you got to walk with your head up in the air. Because I want you, he wants you on level ground. I don't want, he don't want you to be pious. Because I ain't read nowhere in the scripture what Jesus was a pious man. He always was humble. He always had compassion on his people. He showed how great he was and how humble he, we should be because Jesus is our example. Amen? Yeah, man. And Jesus said unto them, And he that loveth me not keepeth not my saying. And the word which he ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. 
Now, I'm, I'm, before I hit it here, we're going to take just a little bit of station break. Then we're going to hit this last two verses. We're going to get out your way. Amen? But let me say this here. You remember how we all read the word or we don't read because we say we don't remember? I can't remember. This next verse that we get to, it's going to show you. You read it. God will bring it to your remembrance. See, our problem is we want to cram it all and then say, God, I can't remember. You ain't, in a way, you ain't really supposed to remember. God, the Holy Ghost job to remember for us. But we got to trust in him. Trust, uh, verse 26. But these things, 25, but these things I've spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the comforter, there come the Holy Ghost again. When the comforter, here comes Jesus, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. How did he say it to me? When I read it, I tell, I used to tell my wife, we used to talk, she used to say, huh? I, I read it, but sometimes I, I can't, not that she can't comprehend, because she's very well knowledge to comprehend the word of God, but she can't remember it. <laughs> so I tell her, I say, hon, read it. Read it. That's all. Read it and trust in God, because his word said, I just showed y'all a word, didn't I? His word say he'll bring things to your remembrance, whatever he said unto you. And the only way he talked to you is when you open this Bible. So if anybody say that Jesus ain't talking to them, mm -mm, somebody ain't reading. Now, we know people. People can be around the Word, but not in the Word. You got to get in that Word. That Word got to saturate your mind, body, and soul. Because if you don't do it, how you think you be able to fight a good fight? The way you be able to fight that good fight is by the word of God. As he said in Ephesians 6 and 10, they put on the whole body armor on. So you can fight the wiles of the devil. Because remember this here, Satan going to do what he's going to do. He'll accuse the other brothers. Now if you don't know the word, he's going to come after you anyhow. Even knowing the word, he's going to come after you. He came after Jesus, didn't he? He gave us, Jesus gave us only three, but believe me, them 40 days that Jesus out there would say he did more than three tempting, but Jesus know we only need three to bleed. So he gave us three of them. And as we realize that, so the comforter, he's still going to give us that comforter. All we got to do is he'll bring all things to your remembrance. And the word here said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have to let not your heart be troubled. See, a lot of times when we don't trust the word of God, especially Christians, I see more Christians is down and out more than the people in the world. We so, we, we, we're disgruntled. We don't like what's going on. We don't like the preacher. Don't like the deacon. Don't care for the mother. Don't want to see the sister. So we just, that's don't, cause we don't like, we just got that don't like attitude. But you got to go somewhere. You got to be somewhere. So if you leave here, I'm not telling nobody to leave, but you leave here, you go somewhere else, you taking the problem. Because you the problem. So you better just stay where you're at and work it out. That's why the God, what the God say, be still and know that I'm God. Heals on upon the heaven and upon the earth. He will. See, but a lot of times we want to do it. And because you ain't exalt me enough, Bishop, I got to go. I don't like it. You holding me down. But I about see if I bishop, somebody came to me like that. I said, if I'm holding you down, get it on. Get it. Because I don't need the headache. See, like I told Bishop before, and this is his birthday. 
Look what we did. We let him make 68. 68. And this thing, I mean, each and every one of us, we're his sheep. And Lord knows, I don't know what y'all want to say, but I know me. He had to do a whole lot of shepherding. <laughs> and when he was shepherding, I was bucking. And I thought I was a goat, not a sheep. <laughs> I was in the wrong family. <laughs> but to God be the glory. Because what God did, God brought us together. And we did it. And see, you don't give him a whole lot of headache. Like I tell everybody else, my mom is 85 years old. Don't get me wrong. Our family ain't perfect. We have our ups and downs, too. I said, but we didn't mess with our mom too much. We let her kind of have her way. We kept stuff back from her. Just like with me and my wife. Our kids, my daughter, she can tell you. Well, I got two back. Well, no, I only got one right now. Oh, there you go. I got two. They'll tell you. They never seen us arguing. Never. We did it in the back room. We didn't do it in front of the kids. Because it wasn't their business. Or what we were doing wasn't their business. So we did what we did, our business, in the back room. And we said what we had to say, did what we had to do. And when we come out, we had a little thing say, when it all over said, you got to touch fingers. <laughs> a lot of times, now, I ain't want to. <laughs> I would like Fred, Fred Sanford. <laughs> Can't do it. But this is what's happening. We got to show our kids that they're the right example. We got to let them know. We got to be that example for them. We got to show them the love. We got to understand. They got to see. Okay, daddy it was tough, but now he's a little soft, pudgy bear. And they realize that. They take advantage of me <laughs> uh, as the dad. But I love them because they mine. Yes, and, and I'm proud of each and every one of them. Yes, Even the ones that ain't right, I'm proud of them too. <laughs> because I know one thing, prayer changes things. Come on. Prayer changes things. You can pray and believe what you ask for, and it shall be done. So if you keep praying, no matter who bad or who doing or what's going, you pray and it'll change. I know what I'm talking about. You're looking at a living sacrifice here. Yeah. I change. What you say, testimony? That's right, thank you. That's right. I'm one. God took me and turned me around. Put my foot on solid ground. Now I'm able to say, to, for God I live and for God I die. I don't want to see nobody else. One thing I got from Mother Hill, even though it's the word of God, I want him to say, well done. My good and faithful servant, you did with a little. Now come over here on the right side and enjoy plenty. That's where I want to be. I want to know that I know that I know that I know that I know in nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Nobody greater. Not nobody I don't care if it's Bill Gates. I think Bill Gates is one of the richest person we got, ain't he? And him too. He can have the Amazon. He can have the Arctic too. It don't make no difference. Ain't nobody greater than Jesus. You keep your eyes on Jesus, and he'll keep us in perfect peace. If you go to the left, he'll take you there. If you want to go to the right, he'll take you there. Left, he'll take you there. Right, he'll go there with you too. But if you stay straight, he'll take you there. I want to be straight paper. I'm striving to be straight paper. I don't want to judge nobody, 
I want to judge me. So I want to be straight paper. Amen? Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost gone, y'all, so I guess that's it. Y'all have a blessed day.